people say, Pastor, I can't see it. Because you can't see it because you're seeing it through your eyes. You gotta see it come out through Jesus' eyes. You gotta begin to say, no, I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a kingdom man first, then a Latino. I'm not Latino first, I'm a kingdom man first. Happen to be wrapped up in a Latino body. But watch me, if we were to view life through the kingdom, if we were to view life that you're my brother, you're my sister, regardless of your color, you're my brother, you're my sister, regardless of your economic standing, you're my brother or my my sister. Why? Because I'm a kingdom man. We got to view things the right way and we got to begin to say no to the wrong perspective and say yes to the Holy Spirit perspective. In the beginning, what? Next, next word is what? Say it louder like you feel it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and, 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 and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Watch me now. But then it says, but the Holy Spirit or and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was hovering above. Somebody say above. Say it stronger. Say above. See, the Holy Spirit was above, was above, was above. He was above all of the chaos, all of the confusion, all the darkness, all the racial tension, all the viruses, all the stuff that is happening because I feel it already. I, I, I got to control myself because here's the issue. Here's the issue. Here's the issue that there's always going to be darkness. There's always going to be voices. There's always going to be stuff, but we got to get the right perspective on things. I'm going to, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach myself happy today. Okay. And, and so, so now we're going to skip over quickly to the book of John, chapter 14. We're going to begin in verse 15. And it says this, Jesus speaking to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I'm talking really fast because that's my style. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Somebody say helper. helper. Say helper. helper. Yeah, to be with you sometimes. Occasionally. When life is good. No, no, he's going to be with you forever. I read out the ESV translation. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Jesus speaks to his disciples, you, me. He says, you know him for he dwells with you. And then he gives a revolutionary statement, not only dwells with you, but he will be in you. The first century Jewish man, that statement would have blew his mind. It would almost be heretical because if you understand anything, that in the first century, back in Jesus' day, there was only one place that the Spirit of God would manifest and it would be once a year with the right man doing the right thing to go into the Holy of Holies and God is saying something to us. He says, no longer am I going to be, watch me, contained in a room. I'm not just going to come I'm on you, I'm going to come inside of you. Now, now, I could tell a lot of you don't get excited, but if you were a Jewish man, it would, it would be really, you couldn't comprehend this. It would be like, whoa, 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 whoa we got that. That can't be. That cannot be. I get it that the Holy Spirit's going to come on me like he did Samson. He's going to come on me like the great women and men of old. Coming on me is one thing, but coming in me is transformational. Jesus keeps on going, and if we go down now to verse uh, 25, these things I've spoken to you while I'm with you, verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father was sent in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all that I have said. Father, thank you for your word. Help me, Lord God, to preach the next 27 or 14, 27 minutes, and now 12 seconds in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said amen. amen. If you're taking notes, because I think you should take notes, an old preacher years ago told me this. He said, he said, Benny, take notes because paper never forgets. Now, that's obsolete. Take notes, come on, because iPhone doesn't forget. Androids will burn up. Come on, but iPhones <laughs> never forget. The reason why I tell you to write things down is because it could be a phrase, it could be a word, it could be something that even the Holy Spirit sparks in you. I have people come up to me and they say, Pastor, man, when you said this in your sermon, I never said it. The Holy Spirit spoke it. You need to write things down. So if you're taking notes, which you should take notes, come on, all campuses right now. Come on, online campus right now. Here's the title of the message, Holy Spirit Perspective. Holy Spirit Perspective. The day in which we're living in, we need to make sure that we have the right perspective, come on, from the right source. What is perspective? Perspective is how you see something. But let me just go a little bit further. You don't see something as it is, you see something as you are. I'll say that again. 
You don't see something as it is, you see something as you are. So you can have two people seeing the same thing, but their perspective is different. Why? Because they're not seeing it as it is, you're seeing it as you are. That's why you could be younger, maybe 19, 20, 21, and man, your heart was just devastated because you had the longest relationship you ever had in a dating life, and it was three weeks. And now your life is, is just ruined and, and, and you're never going to love again. And, and I can't believe they walked out on me. And, and what happened? I mean, look, at, look you're not going to get anything better than me. I mean, you know, and, and, and your perspective at 21, watch me, you're seeing it as you are. Then you go talk to somebody who's maybe 60, 70, 80, and you start telling them. And now they see the same perspective. But watch me, they're seeing it as they are. And they say, oh, no, no, no. Let me tell you some stories. Because if you walk with God long enough, you could look back and see what he brought you through. If you walk with God long enough, you say this too shall pass. If you walk God, walk with God long enough, you will begin to realize that God is a God that can bring you through. And if he brought you through once, come on, he can bring you through again. We see things not as they are, but as, as we are. It's very important to understand that. So what is perspective? Well, perspective is formed... Four ways, write this down, number one. Perspective is formed by your experiences. Number two, perspective is formed by your expectations. Number three, your experience, your, your, ex, your perception is, is, is formed by your beliefs. And number four, your perspective is formed by your culture, by your culture. Let's just break this down just for a few moments here. And so um, a lot of us have had experiences that pre predetermine how we perceive things. Some of you, unfortunately, had to battle some things when you were younger. Maybe your parents got divorced. Maybe you were violated in some way, and now your perspective, because of your experiences, you see something differently because it's who you are. Maybe your expectations, right? Your expectations play a lot in your perspective. In fact, a lot of you are coming to church today saying, man, I, I, I don't know about this guy, but I have a good feeling. He's gonna be one of the best speakers we ever had, and my, your expectation is high, and it's like, you're like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting what you expect. Some of you are like, eh, he's not going to be that good. And you're right. Because your expectations determine how you see something. Right? Your beliefs. What's your core belief? What is your, see, when I see something, my core belief is this, is that with God, all things are possible. When I see something, my belief now, watch me, influences how I see something. Because I don't see something as it is. I see things as I am. And so if you understand this principle that your beliefs and even your culture, honestly, let's talk about culture for a second. I understand I'm not going to cross any boundaries. I'm not going to say anything that's going to be inflammatory. Let me just talk about me and my esposa, my wife. Did I say that right? Did I do the S-A? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Because I don't speak Spanish. And so, see, you perceived I did. I don't. Here's the thing, Wendy grew up in Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Tree hugger, Portland, Oregon. I grew up in LA, in East LA, Southern California. Hermano. My culture and her culture are really different. Like, really different, right? And so her perspective on things at times is different than mine. Why? Because of our culture. Now, why is this important? Because if we are going to have Holy Spirit perspective, we need to understand the Holy Spirit. The first time the Holy Spirit is actually mentioned in Scripture is when we read it in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. And I'll quote again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and there was this void and formless, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Now, I want to just throw some things out and submit some things to you because you are a thinking church. You have a great teacher of the Word of God. You, you are smart. You are articulate. So let me just submit some things to you. I believe that God is a God of order, purpose, and design. Can I get an amen on that right now? 
I don't think God creates chaos and confusion and disorder and all kinds of craziness. I don't believe that because that is not the way God is wired. God is a designer by nature. I have a watch on my hand right now, on my wrist right now, and imagine if this watch all of a sudden just washed up on a beach in Southern California and I pulled this watch out of the ocean and said, look what the ocean has produced. You would look at me and go like, what? The ocean didn't produce that watch. There is, it has too much design. It's intricate. There must be a designer attached to that one. Now, you may believe in the Big Bang. You may believe in all kinds. That, that's all good. This America. You can believe what you want to believe. But if I cannot believe that a watch, an ocean produced a watch, I cannot believe everything that we see was just produced by a Big Bang. So I believe that God is a designer by nature. He doesn't design chaos and confusion. So track with me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I could go into the Hebrew. I could go in and tell you that there's seven words in that first uh, verse with 28 letters. Seven represents number of perfection. Four represents creation even in the Hebrew. It is trying to point to us that creation was perfect. I could go on and tell you that God uh, uh, said... uh, 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 seven times this phrase, and God made, I could go into the Hebrew and make you feel like I'm a big scholar, but I just went to my program called Logos and figured it out. So if God is a creator, watch this, then why would he create chaos and confusion and darkness and voids? I don't believe he did that. I'm just going to submit it to you. You do your own study. What I actually do believe, and I begin to look, and there are some other voices that have said this, not just recently, but for a long time. That some believe that between verse one, when God said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then it says, and you could actually retranslate that and said, and it became. Don't take my word for it, go and study in the Hebrew yourself. So, some people think that between that, that phrase, God created everything, and then there's darkness and voids, that's when Lucifer, the devil, got thrown down, cast into the earth, and started causing the chaos. And God, I'm gonna get back at you. God, 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 God I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ruin your plan. I'm gonna ruin your purpose. I'm gonna ruin your design. I'm gonna ruin everything. And so some believe that literally the enemy came down, and now the chaos and confusion and voids and darkness is the result of the enemy. Let me say to how my, my father-in-law used to tell me. He used to say, Benny, just remember this. God is good, devil bad. I know that's really deep for some of you. Let me try that again, online campus. Come on, God is good. Somebody say, God is good, devil bad. I do not attribute, watch me, the evil, the atrocity to all the stuff that's going on right now to a good God. That is not the way God operates. Let me say it to you this way. God will never put on you what he put on his son. He put sickness on his son to bring healing to your life. He put poverty on his son. Come on, somebody, to give you abundance in your life. We keep putting stuff. Well, well, that's God. That's God. That's not God. That's not God. So watch me. Track with me just for a moment. Could it be if that is the case that the enemy came in and caused the chaos and the confusion and all that strife and all that? Now, if that verse ended there, there is no hope in that. There there, there is no no like, oh, my goodness, is is light ever going to come? But I love the scripture because it said this. It says that the Holy Spirit, first time mentioned. The Spirit of God, first time mentioned. Where is he? He is above. He's above. He's above. He's above. He's above. Now, why should you get excited? Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, whether you're at one of the other campuses or online right now, this is so exciting because biblically speaking, according to Ephesians, that you and I are in Christ and Christ is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me and I'm in the Spirit and now I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now, why is that significant? I'm trying to work the point. I'm trying to work this point because I see the racial unrest. I see the stuff that's happening. I see the COVID. I see the disaster. I see the pain. I see all that. But I have a different perspective than CNN. I have a different perspective than Fox News. I have a different perspective than what the world is saying. I have Holy Spirit perspective. Now, listen to me. Why are you yelling? Because I'm Hispanic, Latino. I got fire in my belly. It's my my culture. Yeah. You be you, I be me. Don't try and make me you. 
It don't work. That's my wife for 21 years. Everybody's got their style, their flow, their vibe. Go with it. Because listen, I have a view that is different. I have a view that God is still in control. Okay, I'm going to try this section. You're too quiet over there. I have a view that God is still in control. That our God, our God is in like, oh my God, what's the devil doing? What's the devil doing? I don't know what the devil's doing. I don't know what the devil's doing. You think God is saying to Gabriel, hey, Gabriel, can you just go spy? Go spy on the devil and see what it, listen to me. The devil plays checkers when God plays chess. Okay, it trips me out with people. Oh, the devil at Diablo. Oh, oh. And, and 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 watch me. You 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 are saying that because you're seeing things as you are. I'm not denying the darkness. I'm not denying the voids. I'm not denying all the stuff that's in Genesis 1. But what I'm doing is I'm elevating you to recognize that in life there's going to be fire furnaces. In life there's going to be valleys. In life there's going to be trouble. In life there's going to be issues. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus said it. Oh, I'm preaching better. You're saying amen right now. I tell you right now. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Espiritu Santo. He was, he was above, he was above, he was above. And now watch me, if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, that means now I'm above. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So that means now my perspective must be different based where I am sitting. Here's the principle, write this down. It changed my life. I discovered this, it changed my life. Because where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines how you respond. I'll say it again. Where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines how you respond. A few years ago, I get to travel still all over the world. I don't know why people bring me in to yell at them for 40 minutes. But if they want to bring me, I'll come and do my best. It's traveling with me, my wife, and my three kids. We went to did a preaching tour in, in the UK, England. I love England. I love London. I could live in London. Anybody been to London? I, I could live in London except it's so doggone expensive. I love London. I've been there I don't know how many times now, preaching some great churches there. So we were over there a few years ago, and, and so, you know, one of my friends, English friends, right, he said, hey, Benny, the best way to see the city, I know you've seen it a lot, but have you ever been on the big red bus? I said, no. You know, do you see that bus, Benny, that has, you know, the first deck and the second deck? I said, yeah. I said, I've never wanted to really ride. He says, nah, you need to ride that bus. So do that next time, okay? And I said, okay. And I said, well, you know, tomorrow, we'll just jump on that bus, see how it goes. So we got up early in the morning, my wife and my three kids, and, and I told them we're going to get on the big red bus, and, you know, it's got, you know, two decks on it. We're going to just kind of go around England, or, or London. And they said, okay, Dad, we got it. So we got there early in the morning, and so the first bus comes, and I didn't really even pay attention. I didn't check on the, on the second deck. I just jumped on the bus. And we paid and we went and we go up the stairs and the second deck is packed. There's no seats available. Now we already paid. We already been, you know, we left where we got picked up and we're going down. I said, it's going to be cool, guys. It's going to be good. There's seats down here. Let's just sit down here. We're already here. It's okay. Put your headphones on because the driver now is, you know, giving the tour. And there's Buckingham Palace telling you stuff about Buckingham Palace. And, and there's, you know, Big Ben. And, the, and there's the Tower of London. And there's Westminster Abbey. And he starts telling you all that stuff. But the problem is, is that when he was talking to us and he said, see, see it on the right-hand side. You, can you see it? And, and what we're doing is we couldn't see. We're pressing or faces against the window trying to see. And my youngest says, dude, I can't see anything. I said, well, open your eyes. <laughs> and I start squeezing my, and I couldn't see anything. I'm getting so frustrated because the guy is saying something that I cannot see. Have you ever been there? Have you ever heard a preacher, a pastor, have you ever heard somebody start saying things that you couldn't see? 
and how frustrated you were, how frustrated I was. I paid all that money. I can't believe it. This is crazy. This isn't even right. We got off the bus. We were all depressed. We were all discouraged. That took us two hours of our time. Man. And then all of a sudden, I went back to the hotel. I began to think about it. I said, no. No, no, no. We're going to get up early in the morning. And this time, fam, we're going to wait and we're going to look to make sure that there is, watch, now space, seats on the upper deck. Sure enough, the first bus came, packed. Second bus came, packed. We're just waiting. I said, BJ, here's the plan. My son, I said, BJ, you're going to take the front. When the bus comes in, door opens, you don't even stop. You just run right in. Okay, Bella, he's your big bro. You follow him. Don't stop. Just run right in. Okay, uh, 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 Wendy, you, you follow. Benaya, you follow. And don't matter what the bus driver says. Just, just keep running. Just go. And he says, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pay. Sure enough, I said, okay, here it is. There's room up there. Looked like about seven seats available. I did the unchristian thing. I cut in line. Because God forgives in Jesus' name. So the door opens. Bam, 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 bam. I'm paying. They run up there. We got seats, hallelujah, put in our headphones, hallelujah. Now watch this, going down the same streets we went the day before with the same driver, by the way, saying the same thing in the earphones, and now we are saying to each other, wow, we can now see what he is saying. You want to know why? Because we are not no longer on the lower deck. We are now on the top deck, and when you live life at the top deck, you begin to see what God says. I came all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, to tell you, quit living a natural life when you are called to the supernatural life. I No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, please hear. Escuche me. I know that just came. Is that right? Hallelujah. People say, Pastor, I can't see it. Because you can't see it because you're seeing it through your eyes. You've got to see it come on through Jesus' eyes. You've got to begin to say, no, I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a kingdom man first, then a Latino. I'm not Latino first. I'm a kingdom man first. Happen to be wrapped up in a Latino body. But watch me. If we were to view life through the kingdom, if we were to view life that you're my brother, you're my sister, regardless of your color, you're my brother, you're my sister, regardless of your economic standing, you're my brother or my my sister. Why? Because I'm a kingdom man. We got to view things the right way and we got to begin to say no to the wrong perspective and say yes to the Holy Spirit perspective. My whole life has been revolutionized. Why? Because I began to live life by a Holy Spirit perspective. See, because you see things as you are, not as they are. Okay, let's talk about the giving. Pastor did a great job. It was all biblical. It was all right. And then some of you still are like, well, I don't know. It's the church needs the money. They got to pay the bills. You know, now we're gathering again. And we got AC and we got, you know, electricity. And surely you got salaries. And it's about money, money, money. You never say that when you go shopping at other places. My favorite place to shop is Nordstrom. I never walk in and say, okay, I know all you want is my money. I don't walk in a Target and say, ha ha, you want my money. Who warped your perspective about church and money? Was it a preacher that was dirty? I'm going to go there. There are some dirty preachers. Doesn't mean all preachers are dirty. Was it, was it somebody that, that did something crazy? Let me just give you another perspective, though. Could it be that money and giving isn't really just about money and giving? Let me, let me say it to you. I'm going to give you a different perspective. I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> Maybe sooner than later. <laughs> Pastor me going, Pastor, Pastor Ben, you're done. I'm preaching next to you. Worship experiences. What happened to him? He got COVID. He had to leave. (laughs) Fever. (laughs) You know when you talk about tithing, you know that when you talk about tithing, people get really, really tense. Talking about tithing is really, really not a good thing for most pastors. But I got over that a a lot of years ago. Because tithing is the number 10. Somebody say 10. 
Now, now this is what I'm gonna ask you not to shout, not to say anything, because you're gonna shout at the wrong time and you're gonna reveal yourself. <laughs> when you study the number 10 in the scripture, don't take my word for it, study. Don't just take pastors, who's ever, I tell this to my church, don't just take what I'm preaching, go study it. I should give you enough to make you curious to go deeper. That's my role. So I, so I started with number 10. You know the number 10 in the Bible means the number of testing? That's what it is. The number 10 is testing. Prove it. Okay? How about Daniel that says, you know what? Give me 10 days. I'm just going to eat vegetables and water and test me after 10 days. Test. Jesus tells a story about five virgins, five foolish, five wise, 10 virgins. It's a test. Are you still with me? How many, how many plagues did God test Pharaoh with? Mm -hmm. How many disciples did Jesus have? 12, just testing you. <laughs> could it be, could it be that the tithe which is 10 is a test of who you really trust? Let's go there for a second. I feel something, as they say in the old church. When I give my tithe, I'm telling hell, I'm telling myself, I'm telling the economy, I'm telling a virus, I'm telling everything that's shouting, not do it. No, no, no. I don't put my trust in a man. I don't put my trust in an economy. I don't put my trust in my job. I put my trust in God himself. Take out a coin. Take out some, some currency. What does it say? In God we what? Trust. The government in that instance got it right. See, but you got to have the Holy Spirit perspective. Thank you, God. I've been tithing since the age of 10. How many years is that? 35 plus a few years. I've tithed when I didn't have anything. I tithed when I was living in a trailer. I tithed when I didn't have enough money even to get my laundry done. I tithed when I had to cut a burrito three ways and I ate that for breakfast and I ate that for lunch and ate that for dinner. I tithed when I had to have spaghetti and I didn't have Tupperware. I had Cool Whip containers. You don't even know you're not old enough. You take the old Cool Whip containers, come on somebody, help me, and you would repurpose it, and you put your spaghetti in there, and you would try and wash that Cool Whip, it'd still be red. Don't look at me and say, you don't know, I know what it is, I know what it is to wait in line for, 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 for government cheese, I know what it's like, but I tell you, my dad taught me, I'm teaching my kids, in God I trust, I tithe, I give, because my God will take care of me. Somebody give God a five second praise break right now. You can't move me. Well, let, let's exegete the text. You can't move me, Jethro. Juan, back up. Because a man with an experience, come on, somebody. Listen, a man with an argument is always at the mercy with a man with an experience. You can't budge me. You can't, why? Because I've seen too much. I've seen him with Christ in heavenly places, and I don't care what it looks like. Our God is still the God of abundance. Our God is still a God of provision. Our God is still a good, I keep preaching it. Our God is above. Our God is great. Our God is awesome. Our God is powerful. Let me tell you how powerful God is. Because I'm getting pushback. I could feel pushback in the crowd. I've been doing this. I have been preaching full time for 31 years. I know, I know I don't look that old. I know. If you count the other time, I've been preaching for nearly 35 years. People tell me this, well, if God is so good, then, then why did this happen? Don't know. See, because we think God's going to keep us from something but if he doesn't keep you from, he'll keep you in. How come God didn't keep the three Hebrew guys out of the fiery furnace? Didn't keep them out. Threw them in. Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, yo. How many, how many, how many guys did we throw in there, yo? We threw in tres. 
Tres amigos. Nebuchadnezzar in another culture. Well, I do perceive. That looks like there's four in there. And here's the crazy thing. The fourth man looks like the son of God. Now, stop. We read that stuff in the Bible. It's like, it just, it just goes, it just goes, just, we don't even pay attention to it. Number one, Nebuchadnezzar has never seen the son of God. How does he know what the son of God looks like? You know how many times I've had people say, well, I don't believe in that God thing, Benny, in your life. I don't believe in it. But dang, the stuff that's happening, there must be a God. When God shows up in the midst of what you're going through, even people that would not recognize it's God will eventually say, you know what, it's not chance. Come on, it's not just some kind of luck. There is a God, and that God seems like he's working on your behalf. Somebody, you understand what I'm saying? This is the kind of God that we serve, that we now have Holy Spirit perspective. Because, Jesus, I got to end because my time is up. Jesus prayed this prayer, Pastor Steve. He said, pray this prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, he's saying, God, let, us, let, 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 let heaven come down to earth. This is what Genesis 1 teaches us, that we are supposed to live life heaven to earth perspective, not earth to heaven perspective. You know what I mean by that? Listen to me. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, you see that mountain? You speak to the mountain. That is heaven to earth. But we do as we, we, we talk to God about the mountain. That's earth to heaven. We're not supposed to live that way. Okay, let me try this section over here. <laughs> we waste our time. Is, here's our prayer. Okay, God, you know, oh God. And you, start, you waste 25 minutes of how big your mountain is. You're telling him every detail. You're telling him every intricacy. You're telling him every, everything about the mountain. Let me help you out. God already knows more about the mountain than you do. God knows all stuff that you don't even know. Quit spending your time, watch me earth to heaven, and start saying, God, I thank you. I thank you that I'm wrapped up in you. I thank you all things are possible with you. I thank you no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I thank you, Lord God, that I speak to the mountain. Mountain, you hear me, mountain. You hear how big my God is, mountain. I can tell you a story I didn't tell last night. Because I might preach the same message, it comes out totally differently because the audience is different. The Holy Ghost knows something different. I'm going to do something that might trip you out a little bit. There's a gentleman with his hands like this. You're right there, sir. Nice looking guy. Right there. I'm pointing you out. Just wave at me, sir. Yes, sir. Don't know you. I wouldn't really want to cross you because I think you, me and you got into it. I might hurt you, so I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm sitting on the front row, worshiping. I turn around, and God says, see that man? I said, yeah, God. First time at this church, please don't ask me to do something like that. Because I might be going home on the 11 o'clock flight. So I got a simple word for you. Even though you don't understand that maybe God didn't show up or maybe it was like, God, where are you? Or God, what's going on? I just have a word for you that God said to tell you right now that he's been there when you haven't known him, that he's closer to you than you even know. And sir, the hand of God is on you and you belong to a God that's about ready to, in the next, I'm gonna say something to you, in the next 21 days, see what happens. What do I have to do? Just say, God, I am here. It's for you. Perspective is changing in you. It's shifting in you. If you're gonna, that's a, that's a golf clap. We don't do golf claps here. We do NFL. We do, come on. We do, we do like, no, no, no golf clap. No golf clap. Oh man, it's, it's I gotta end, sorry. I had a great story, but we'll end it right now. How many wanna hear that story? How many hear that? How many of you give me uh, just one more minute? Just raise your hand if you give me one more minute. Okay, there was at least 40 hands that went up. I got 40 minutes. Um, 
Our church was facing bankruptcy, Pastor Steve. It was during the Great Recession. I had my back to the wall. We were so far in over our heads, not by our own doing. I don't want to get into all the details. So stressed out on my mind. One of the fastest growing churches in America, the first five years we exploded out of the gate. We were the number two fastest growing church in America. Nothing could stop us and then a recession hit. The series of circumstances, I find myself in court, I find myself lawsuits against me. And my wife is stressed out. I said, babe, we need to go pray. She says, we do at Disneyland. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Some of you can judge Disneyland. But who ever thought a mouse would make billions? <laughs> We go to Disneyland, we pray, and I'm walking around, I'm sitting underneath the, underneath the monorail that's right in front of, it's a small world. My phone rings, my cell phone rings, I hear a voice, and it said, this is Benny Perez, and I said, who is this? Because at that time, the banks were hiring investigators, and they're trying to find things that were wrong, but nothing was ever wrong, our books were clean. They said, you don't know me, but my name is so-and-so, my name is Ron. I said, I don't know you, and I was ready to hang up. He goes, I heard you're in trouble. I said, who told you that? He said, a personal friend of mine, a personal friend of yours. Please talk to me. Wendy's like getting mad at me because we're doing business on vacation. I said, Wendy, go back on It's a Small World. <laughs> True story. Can you tell me what's wrong? I said, yes, sir, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong. I need $1.7 million in 30 days. That's what's wrong. He doesn't live in this country. I've never met him personally. He's watched me online. I've never talked with him, nothing. He says, is that, is that all? I said, man, I should ask for 2.7 million. <laughs> it's a true story, I'm not making this up. He said, I'm gonna talk to my wife Shelby I'm going to call you back in 30 minutes. Hung up. Impossible. Ma'am, impossible on the third row. Impossible on online campus. He calls me back. My wife is back off the right. She goes, you're still on the phone? Go back on the right. You can, my wife will verify the story. Me and my wife have prayed. We're going to send you $700,000 U.S. as a gift. You don't have to pay it back. I didn't really say, wow, because he says, but I know you. Because I have a, uh, my background is accounting. He said, you're a million dollars short. I said, yes, I am, sir. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to lend the church a million dollars, 0% interest rate, because we can't charge a church interest. Listen, listen. I quit talking to God about my problem. He already knew it. I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I, I, I can't figure it out, God, but I'm going to trust you. When he comes off, I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm Pentecostal. I'm speaking in tongues. No, at Disneyland. And I, I just drank too much, folks. <laughs> I'm weeping, I'm weeping, I'm weeping, I'm weeping, I'm weeping. I told Wendy, she starts crying. And God delivered us. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? There is a perspective. I got to hurry. Come on, somebody. If you're facing something, whatever camp is online, you're facing something right now. You know I'm talking to you. When I say three, stand to your feet. Ready? One, two, three. Stand all over this auditorium. Stand out there. You're facing something. You're facing something. You're facing something. You're facing something. Look at me. You're facing something. I feel something. I feel something. I know you got another service, I feel something. Some of you need to come back to, to the next service. You need to stay and come back to the third one. You need to double dip, triple dip, why? Because faith is rising inside of you. Faith is rising inside of you. Watch this, hold on. God, listen, listen.
I, I, she, she could tell you what happened last night, but there's somebody here. I saw you at 3.33 last night. You woke up at 3.33 a.m. I, I, I know I could be online another campus, but please, it's somebody here right now. You woke up at 3.33 and not 3.35, 3.30 a.m. And wave your hand like crazy like this. Wave your hand, 3.30, wave it like this if you're gonna, you, that's you, that's you. There, that's more than what, who else? There's, there's three other people, where are you? 3.33, there's one, there's two. Not, not 335, it's gotta be 333 a.m. And I got a word from you from God. I got a word from you from God. I know it's weird, I know it's strange, I know. And I just, I just the way I am, I just, I'm like, okay, God, I'll do it. Nobody, I'll, I'll do it, God, I'll do it. I'll do it, because this new generation has never seen stuff like this. A new generation that has, I talk, I still preach to young people. I just did a conference, 1,200 young people. They never seen stuff like this before. But some of us got burned, some of us didn't like it. Some of us, it was extreme, I get it, I've been there. But we need a moving of the Holy Ghost again. We need a moving of the spirit again that's naturally supernatural clap your hands like you really believe what i'm saying come on online okay here we go this is a quick one quick one this is a drive-by it's a drive-by it's a drive-by watch 333 the lord told me to tell you john chapter 3 verse 33 look at that scripture the last part of that verse it says god is true you will know the testimony that God is true. I prophesy to you three that no matter what the enemy is doing, no matter what you think, our God is true. His word is true. Put your faith and trust in him. Come on, somebody. That's a word for everybody possibly. Give God a five-second praise break right now. Legacy. Let's all stand. I'm going to turn it over right now. God, the greatest thing that could ever happen is not blind eyes opening people coming out of wheelchairs. It's not tumors disappearing. Thank God for miracles. And, and we see a lot of stuff, like crazy stuff that you would say, oh, do you really see that? We see that. We see that stuff. It's, it's not just giving words to people. I'll be in a restaurant. I, I, I said, tell somebody, and this is what I used to get. You're, you, oh my God, you're a psychic. I said, no, I'm a Mexican. That's what they laugh. Because all the world knows is psychic phenomena. They never say you're a prophet. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. It's just wrong. I'll do it at a restaurant. I might even do it today. Which, okay. I know this sounds... So listen. I'm in the supernatural. I love it all. I love it. Now I give spirit. I love it. I mean, they got all this backup because I, I grew up in a gang era. I know you're trying to get me... It's going to take more than you to get me off the stage right now. I'll take you out first. <laughs> And after she beats me down, it's over. You know what's the crazy thing about you is when you sing, all heaven opens. No, no, I'm serious. When you sing, just, okay, here we go. Sorry, let's go back. I'm messing up online campus. The greatest thing that can happen is you can say yes to Jesus. It's the greatest thing. I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus in 1986, changed my life. On a beach, no keyboards, no screen, no church. On a beach, Jesus showed up. I knelt on my knees. I began to weep and cry. I said, God, why do you want me back? He says, it's time to come home, son. It's time to come home. But God, all the stuff I've done, I blaspheme your name. I did this. God never answered. He says, it's time to come home. There are people right now watching every campus in this auditorium right now. You know who you are. When I see three, it's time to come home. It's time to say yes to Jesus. It's time to become a follower of Jesus. Come on, are you ready? One. Are you ready? Two. Ready? One, two. Come on, shoot your hands up when I see three. If that's you, ready? One, two, three. All over the campuses. Come on. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, all campuses. Come on, let's clap. Come on, for the people that raise your hand. Come on, you're saying yes. You're coming home to Jesus. You're receiving him as your Savior and Lord. Come on, one more time. Wave your hand if that's you. Awesome. Let's pray this prayer together. You ready? I want to pray this prayer. Say, dear Heavenly Father, right now, I turn and put my trust in Jesus Christ. I receive salvation, forgiveness of sins through Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit. Come on in. I belong to you now. Change me from the inside out. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody, say amen. Give God a good praise. Come on, church. Let's celebrate what God is doing in this house today.